Glad to have you back. This is Channel's Television and the program is Capital Market. We'll take a look at some of the OTC markets before us and the NASD is number one. The indicators had a negative movement this week. The USI closed at 656.46 points while capitalization ended at 435.65 billion naira. Volume traded decreased by 63% to 3.19 million units as the total value of shares traded fell by 12% in 384 deals. Nine securities were traded in our freeland properties and Friesland Campina emerged the top traded securities for the five-day session. Over to the FMDQ OTC, sentiment in the bond markets were rather bearish this week as investors sold off across board. Average yields rose 30 basis points across benchmark instruments to close at 14.9% at the start of the week. There was, however, a reversal of that trend on Friday as average yields fell 6 basis points to settle at 15.3%. Now the T-bills market. Um, the allocation of T-bills auction offsets the expected impact of the 131.5 billion Naira OMO maturity. And of course, that created some kind of uh, less interest in the T-bills uh, uh, number of uh, securities in the market, where we see that um, the following the uh, 29 number of bonds that were traded in that's on the FMDQ side. 11th August 2016 T-bills was the one that gathered more, gathered more attention by 353 deals. He had 90.5 million Naira uh, exchanged across the August 2016 uh, instrument. 27th October 2016 as well as 15th June 2017 T-bills also had 46 and 41 uh, deals from investors. A total of 555 uh, deals was seen across the T-bills market on the FMDQ OTC platform. And now we know that Next week, we'll be having the MPC meeting. The MPC meeting holds on 25th and 26th of July, and that will be the fourth meeting which will be holding this year. It is expected that this will help the uh, CBN and, the monitor and its members of the committee to get, uh, review some of the indices of our monetary um, policies. And of course, Mr. Tunde Oyekunle, who is still here with me, and I will be taking a look at this, and given that he will be sharing his expectations from the meeting with us, uh, we know it will hold Monday and Tuesday next week. The first day is um, the first day of the meeting Monday, on Monday and then yeah. the outcome will be released on Tuesday. Tuesday. Now, talk to us about your expectations because we've seen a lot of analysis put together by. Um, of course, analysts and investors saying that they expect the NPR to be jacked up. Yeah, um, critical con consideration and factors we need to look at is the um, the projected slower um, global growth uh, on the back of Brexit. It's very important. Not only that, we have to look into um, headline inflation of 16.5% coming uh, up from 15.3% in May to 16.5. And also the Q1 GDP of um, negative 36 basis points. All this with insecurities and uh, uh, and the decline in the precision of the of, of the naira against the dollar is something they have to look at. So I believe the committee will have to do a trade-off, a trade-off whether to uh, increase the NPR or to reduce the NPR. Increasing the NPR in a constructing economy is not very good because it will slow down and drag economic growth. And if you want to increase the NPR to boost um, dollar's liquidity, it has a conflicting uh, uh, ability in the economy. So I want to believe they will do a trade-off and I expect them to tilt more towards stimulating economic growth. And hopefully, this will be able to encourage foreign investors back into the country. By how much, how much increase are you looking at? 
some have projected 100%, some have projected 200% basis points, and then other variables were left unchanged? Uh, uh, I would not um, expect uh, an increase. Um, for me, I wanted to maybe put it at, um, uh, at to leave it at 12% or maximumly do just 1% increase. Mm. Okay, so let's take a look at the last um, um, uh, meet the, uh, last, the outcome of the last meeting, we had the uh, CRR and the liquidity ratio still at 22.5% and 30%. Mm. Uh, what kind of expectation do you have in, from, this, from these? Well, the CRR had 22.5%, I think is okay, considering the fact that the banking sector, they are really faced with a lot of challenges. Uh, we've seen how uh, the Sky Bank is trying to get out of the challenges it's, it's going through currently. And the liquidity ratio at 30%, I think all these things, for me, they need to uh, just leave them on change because increasing the, uh, the, the, the CR is likely to affect the income making abilities of the bank. Some of them are, uh, are laying off staff so I want to believe all these um, literature should be left unchanged and let's focus on economic growth. Mm. So some have judged as well or argued as well that it will be too early to assess these uh, new foreign exchange, flexible foreign exchange policy uh, in a negative way and of course we if you, if, you, if you recall we actually had someone who flood that entirely and said that this is not doing well for the economy what are your thoughts on this you think we're still doing good with that uh, we are not doing so badly however uh, what we are saying far far outweighs the expectation you know, uh, is below expectations, rather, right? um, because um, with what we have seen and uh, the expectation, um, we are currently seeing only CBN as the major seller, mm -hmm. and we are not getting a lot of inflow from alternative sources. So and this less is less activities on the spot. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's a lot of concern to hold, and we need to increase that to be successful. But do you see this meeting modifying that? Yes, it must be part of the consideration at this um, current meeting that they will be having next Sunday, week. Kule, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for coming through. Thank and you. And that's the show this evening. Thank you for watching. I'm Temple Ashaju. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.